Hopefully by now you're wondering how this all works. And it turns out that there are really just two functions in the logic interpreter that do all the work. And there are two central concepts that they implement. So one is unification and the other is search. Let's first look at unification, which allows us to take two different relations that are different, but really, according to a particular assignment to variables, can mean the same thing. So this is a general mechanism for pattern matching, when you have variables in two patterns. The basic operation of the logic interpreter is to attempt to unify two relations. And unification is finding an assignment to all the variables in both the relations that would make the two relations the same. Okay, so here's one relation, which has some nested structure in it. And here's another relation that has less nested structure. The purpose of unification is to say that there is a way in which both of these could be the same. And that would happen if for every question mark X, I substituted it with the list AB. What about unifying that same list with something that has two variables, Y and Z? Well, again, I would say this is possible. I need Y to be B and Z to be C, and then I'm done. These two lists are the same. And finally, what if I say I want one X such that when I substitute for X, I get A, B, C, A, B. And this will say false. So part of unification is discovering when it's impossible for two patterns to be the same. Because this pattern is something repeated three times, and up here, obviously, we don't have anything repeated three times. Okay, so that's the goal of unification. Let's talk about how it works. It's actually a pretty simple process. Unification recursively unifies each pair of corresponding elements in two relations. And as it goes, it accumulates an assignment from the variables to their values. And this is really two stages. You look up the variables in the current environment to tell you if you've established any bindings already. Now this is important because you can only have one particular binding for a variable. So if you see X appear twice, it's got to mean the same thing in both cases. And then we establish new bindings to unify the elements. So let's look at this example that we saw earlier. It's going to recursively unify each pair of corresponding elements. So in order to unify the whole thing, it will look first at this versus this, and then CC, and then ABX again. So it looks up the variables in the current environment. I'll write the environment down here as a Python dictionary. So far, X is not bound to anything. So looking up has no effect. And then what we do is we establish a new binding, meaning X is AB, that would make these two things the same. What about C and C? Well, those are both symbols and they happen to be the same. So there's no new bindings we need to do. There's no variables to look up. We just say, well, these are the same already. And then in the third case, it's entirely different from the first one because we've already established a binding for X. So we look that up, we find that X is bound to AB, and then we compare AB to AB, realize that those are the same, and so we've successfully unified. And we would say success. Now what about that instance when it was impossible to unify two patterns? Well, here's what happens in a step-by-step -step way. Let's say we're starting from scratch. We try to unify AB and X, and we do so by adding a binding from X to AB. Next, we look at how to unify C and X. X is already bound, so we have to look up X and see that it's already bound to AB. And since C and AB are different, we reach a situation where we cannot unify these two relations. So symbols or relations without variables only unify if they're exactly the same. And these two are not exactly the same. One's just a symbol, the other one's a list. Failure. Okay, so this is a computational process that does pattern matching. Now what happens if you have variables in both sides? So two relations can contain variables on both sides and we can still unify. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. So let's say I want to unify 
two patterns, where the first one says, I just have to repeat something twice. I don't know whether this is a symbol or a list or a list of lists. It's just something repeated twice. And the second pattern says, I have A something C and I have A B something. So first of all, see if you can think of an assignment to X, Y, and Z that would in fact make these two things the same. Well, here's actually what happens when you run unification. It says there is a way to unify these two patterns the first thing we do is we look at the first corresponding elements in these two patterns. And we realize as long as we substitute a y c for x, then I'll have the same thing. So take a close look at this. We're saying the variable x is defined in terms of the variable y. And that's okay. Because what happens next is we try to unify these two we look up x to find that it's a, y, c. So what we're really unifying is a, y, c and a, b, z after lookup. And this is possible as long as we bind b to y and c to z. So a is fine. We establish that binding. We establish that binding because unification just goes through element by element. And then we're done. So we have an assignment of values to variables that completes this unification. Now the annoying thing is that X isn't really defined as what it is. So X should be A, B, C, but instead it's defined as A something C where that something is B. So substituting valuables for variables may require multiple steps. We get an environment that looks like this, and then we have to go through, figure out what X is by figuring out what all of its parts are. And this is a process called grounding. So what do I mean by grounding? Well, if we just look up X in this environment, it will tell me it's a variable Y, C. If I look up Y, it will tell me it's B. To ground X means to keep substituting the variables within it until I get only symbols and lists. And that would give me the list A, B, C, which requires multiple items in this environment. Let's look at the implementation of unify which takes two symbols or relations E and F and an environment which has bindings from variables to values. First we look stuff up. That's step one of what I stated before, look up variables in the current environment. And step two is establish new bindings to unify elements. Now there's more in this implementation. These two cases say that symbols or relations without variables in them only unify if they are the same. And finally, we have to have the part where we recursively unify the first and rest of any lists. So if E and F are both lists, we'll get the first element of E and F, and we'll get E.second and F.second, which are the rest of those respective lists. So we're pattern matching piece by piece. As an example, well, here's the same example that we had before. The whole thing is a list, and so we end up going to the recursive case first, which focuses us on these two. Now, these two is an instance where is var f is true, f is a variable, and so we define f as whatever e is. So here we have a statement, and dot define f as e, which introduces into our environment a binding x goes to a, b. Okay, after that we return true, but we still have to process the rest of the lists. So c is c is this case. If e is the same as f, we'll return true. And then finally, we get to this third case where we have to look up e and f. Now only f is a variable, so we look that up and we find that it's a, b. Now, the reason that it's AB is that the same environment, every time we reach one of these two cases, is also passed forward to all of the further steps of unification. So we have the same environment where X is already bound to AB. When we look up X in that, we are now unifying these two things, which are the same, and so we return 